Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Towards the Origin in discussion with our Sheikh Qadir Lutfur Rahman with our tonight's topic title, that is equality. Our email address will be appearing shortly at the bottom of your TV screen, but for your reference, it's Towards the Origin at chsuk.tv. Please feel free should you have any uh, concerns, any suggestions, any feedback, let us know and we'll be more than happy to discuss either in tonight's program or inshallah in our future episodes. Sheikh, before we went to the break, we discussed about the concept of ittaqillaha mastata'atum. Yeah. Now, you did touch upon a very important element there, to the best of our capacity. Yeah. Now, the definition of best of our capacity, it changes from person to person. Yeah. Now, if I have to give you a simple example, people who live slightly, say, outside London, and they have to be involved in a trade that um, allows something that has to be done against the Quran or, um, uh, or the Hadith, which is directly mentioned, the prohibitions are directly mentioned, but the, yet you will hear the example, for my family survival, for my own survival, mm -hmm. I'm doing this, mm -hmm. I'm selling such and such thing, yes, but um, I know it's not allowed in Islam, it's yeah. just for the survival purpose. Yes. Now, people to people, we do see that this, the translation of the Hadith mm -hmm. keeps on changing according to their own definition. Yes. Now, the best of capacity, I would like you to slightly highlight on that, what does that actually mean to the best of capacity? So, uh, everyone knows uh, about his condition, you know, uh, more than anybody else. He knows about himself or she knows the about owner herself. of the house knows yes, his house yes, very well yes, very well so uh, originally actually the word was uh, yeah or you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared right there's not any consideration compromising but then to make it slightly easy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah fear Allah according to your according to the best of your ability or capacity now uh, we obviously are not allowed to go near the prohibitions. The direct prohibitions. Anyway. Yes, that haram, mm. halal, haram which is apparent and clear. In al halal abayin wal haram abayin. But there could there could be situations where we are we have no choice. We we have no choice but to go slightly near or like to take as necessities like darurat like darura muliha like uh, like a dire necessity then of course like you know, sometimes we um, as according to the scholars of islam sometimes we are allowed to take do certain things but according to again the the need only but that need again based on the um expertise people who are yeah, excel exactly. in that field not the, the deducing the own opinion no, of course, but rather fuqaha, sitting on a one-to-one -one yeah. with a qualified alim exactly. and then deciding it absolutely correct so so everyone knows his condition and he would be questioned by allah now if i say oh it's, it's you know i'm gonna i will do this according to and then uh, you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question me as well like but then what again, kind of but then again, the critics of Islam will say that Allah is Ghafoor al Rahim. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ghafoor al Rahim, yes, for the mistakes that we do unknowingly, for mm. the mistakes that we do without our, our choice, without unintentional mistakes. Ghafoor al Rahim. We cannot say, oh, we'll, make, we'll commit sins and then Allah is Ghafoor al Rahim. Okay. That's, that's the most, Just uh, wanted to clarify yeah, that, that point. That's not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's come back to Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. Fear Allah wherever you are. And towards the end, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, that nasa bi hasan, be good, be nice, be kind, be tolerant. You know, behave with people. Uh, you know, with the best of behavior. So nasa bi hasan. So taqwa cannot be completed without the husn of khuluq, husn al akhlaq or the good character. Um, now, let's talk about the equality. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He established the equality in such a degree in such a way that i think no one else can do in this world and i will give you the examples how we uh, we can we have seen in our recent uh, time like some of the people how they were attracted by islam if you have heard of somebody called uh, malcolm x hmm. uh, in united states of america who was named as al-hajj malik shabazz so malcolm x was a civil right fighter in 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 united states who was actually uh, an one of the most influential African American in recent time in the United States. Now, Malcolm X was part of a movement called Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam was a movement which is to fight for the rights of black people. And there was a huge 
problems between the black and white in America. And it still exists in many the places. The tension still we see on yeah, news. Yeah, it does exist. Um, so uh, the, the white people, is to, black people sitting, the white people are devil. That's what they say. They used to think. And the white people sitting, the black people are slaves. So th that tension was there and even it exists in some places. So Malcolm X, he involved, he joined a movement called Nation of Islam, which actually was far from the teachings of Islam. They named themselves Nation of Islam, but their teaching was very far from the original Sunni tradition or Sunni teachings of Islam. But Malcolm X, finally, he decided to perform pilgrimage, Hajj. So he said that I went to perform pilgrimage in Mecca towards the end, just before the conversion to the mainstream Sunni Islam. So he said, after traveling to Mecca al mukarramah at the time of Hajj, he said, for the last two weeks, I stayed and resided in the holy city of Mecca during the time of Hajj. And he said that um, for the last two weeks, we slept under one tent, we ate from the same plate, and we drank from the same glass. And when we said we, we mean that people from each and every corner of this globe, of this earth, African, American, Australian, European, black, white, brown, red, your name and you find the people are in that place are like brothers, brotherhood. I mean, that's, that's why when Allah says, when there's a hadith, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً yeah, Now, no way. way the hadith mentions about darajat. Yes. Now, still we do not understand one of the best practical example, not only the pilgrimage, but on a daily salah yes. in congregation. It's a reminder. Together. Side by side. Yeah. Side by side. Now, what... The definition. What is the definition of side by side? Is it just it mean that I have to stand I mean, side I, by I can't side? I just say like other? recently I have seen um, in in London Central Mosque uh, the muezzin of Medina al Munawwara visited. So I just saw a gentleman like <coughs> praying in in the in Central Mosque, and um, after salah uh, he gave adhan and iqama, and people tend to like make uh, musafaha with him the handshake. The man uh, looked very humble and and very noble. Then I found that he is the muezzin of Medina. Mm. Now imagine like a person of that caliber, muezzin of the one of the biggest and the holiest mosques in Islam. He's just praying with everybody like a normal person. That is the equality. We see sometimes people are like from like prime ministers, uh, the, the MPs and, and people of like, you know, different, uh, different. Uh, the people of the highest state in our yeah, society. They come and, and pray, you know, they, they even they, sit, they stand next to someone who's poor, maybe a beggar or someone who's like a, a normal you know, person of the society. That is the teaching of Islam. So going back to Malcolm X, he said, for the last two weeks, I have spent time with people of the old race, all nationalities, all background. But he said, we drank from the same glass, ate from the same plate, and slept in one tent. He said, that taught me the concept of equality in Islam. And that taught me that Islam could be the only or the most uh, uh, practical solutions for the to remove or to destroy the disease of racism. And then he converted to mainstream Islam when he returned to United States of America. And people like Muhammad Ali, the Cassius Clay, hmm. the boxer, and people like Imam Siraj or Hajj, many others were inspired by Malcolm X, uh, and they converted also the mainstream Sunni Islam. So now, where did this concept, how, how, Muslims, where did they find this? From where it came? So let's look at the prophetic tradition. Prophet Sallallahu said in hadith, which is on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, that he says, Inna ya nas, he's, he made a very important speech on the Fath Mecca, on the day of on the day when, uh, when the day when Makkah was conquered, on the day of conquest of Makkah, Fath Makkah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made a speech by saying, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, O people, Inna Allah qad adhaba ankum ubbiyyat al jahiliya, O people, indeed, Allah the Almighty removed the disease of, or the pride of pre-Islamic era, the pride of the jahiliya, the pride of ignorance, the, the, the takabbur, and also pride for their fathers. So people will say, Do you know, you know who, who my dad is, who my father is? Amar you know, people say, yeah, you know, Bangsha, I'm a Kun Bangsha, I'm a Barikuda, I'm a Janona, I'm a Jatuda, I'm a Deshkuda. So people used to, even in the pre Islamic era, people used to boast about their fathers. 
you know, the families. Thailand, the Quraysh didn't have their own yes. pride about the family and the exactly. tribe they're from. Exactly. Now, uh, Prophet said, وَتَعَاظُمِيَا bil-aba" means boasting about their fathers. Bil-aba, bi-aba. Then uh, Prophet said, Allah the Almighty removed these problems, these diseases, these, these, these illnesses. Then he said, فَالنَّاسُ ورجلان, The men or human beings are two categories. Then he says, number one, بَرٌ taqi, Someone who is fearful, righteous um, servant. And the other one is فَاجِرٌ shaqi, A miserable sinner, the sinful individual. هَيِّنٌ عَلَى الله. Then وَالنَّاسُ Then Prophet said, وَالنَّاسُ بَنُوا آدَمْ so again, referring back to the children of Adam, the human beings, the mankind, are the children of Adam. وَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمُ مِنْ تُرَابُ وَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ مِنْ تُرَابُ And Allah the Almighty created Prophet Adam alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salam from the dust, from earth, min turab. قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى The verse that we recited earlier, O oh, mankind, we have created you from male and female, and then we made you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize one another, you may identify one another. And then he says, In akramakum عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Indeed, verily, the best or the most honorable one amongst you is the one who he fears Allah the most. Now, we have problems in our Muslim society. Unfortunately, uh, this had been, has, we can see the, this, these problems reduced in, in many non-Muslim society, which mm. has been taken actually from Islam. Now we have problems uh, between, you know, when we say we are from Silat, so people of Silat, they have their own kind of, you know, a local tribalism. <coughs> so people say, oh, Biani Bazari, Mulu Bazari, Zogonnatfuri, Bishnati. So people are trying to feel or being superior, they say, oh, we are better than the others. So people of Bishnat trying to say we are better than Biani Bazaris. Biani Bazaris trying to say we are better or more superior than the others. I mean, not obviously everyone, but there are people who have or carry this mentality. And in fact, I have seen the problems in masjids. Many masjids in, in Taham, let's say, probably in, across the UK, there's still the problems lie in the mosque within the management. So management, Biani Bazari, or Bishnati, or Mule Bazari, or Gulaf Kunji, or, you know, people from uh, Borlecha, or, or Zoki, you know. I mean, various places. Yeah, yes, various mm. places. So we see these problems are there. On top, so people say, oh, I'm Sileti, you're Noakhali, you're Dhaka, you're from Borishal, you're from this part, you're from that part. So people are trying to feel superior. So this is called, this Ta'adhumu Habil Aba, similar to that, boasting about the tribe or the place or or the territory or the ne or, or the nationality so then people have oh i'm londony you know i'm from london and but especially uh, when they go to the country of origin home, that's where people, they demonstrate they boast, yeah. you know because they carry you know some sort of passports then you have people like you know um saying that you know which country or oh, i'm bangladeshi i'm bengali you're pakistani you're indian you're arabs so you see that kind of problems there. So people are generalizing our oh, Arabs. They saw probably one or two Arabs are bad, so the Arabs are bad. Then you see some people, maybe some Bengali people made mistakes in some, some places, so our Bengalis are, are bad. Then you've got Pakistanis, or Pakistani did maybe some wrong in the past, so all the Pakistanis are bad. Now, Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, alayhi, he made a very important statement in his Kitab al-Ihya. He says one of the mistakes of human beings is generalizing. So you generalize a comment and that is very unfair so when you say Pakistanis are bad that means you're saying the millions of Pakistanis and where there might be good people you're saying they're bad they of course indeed not only might but there are good people the same goes to the Indian side Indians of the same well, for Bangladeshi as well, Bangladeshis yeah. as well as all yeah. race I mean uh, but uh, as they say there's black sheep in every community yeah exactly. so exactly. we cannot define the whole community based on those bad apples Abs or black sheep uh, absolutely correct so now um, this disease is still there. We cannot get rid of it. And Prophet Sallallahu he destroyed, he eradicated. Look at this <coughs> famous statement, how he condemned like inequality. So he condemned very, uh, very clearly and strongly um, that can be found um, in uh, a hadith uh, on the authority of Al-Ma'roor. So he says, that He says, Al-Ma'roor says that I have met Abadhar in Al-Ghifari in a place called Rabadha. 
And we all know Abu Dhar al-Ghifari was a very pious companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was very spiritual, a, a, a saint, worship, uh, a worshiper of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, Al-Ma'roor says, I have seen Abu Abu Dhar. I saw Abu Dhar in, in, in Rabada, the place called Rabada. Wa And he was wearing a cloak, a very nice jubba, nice cloth, suit. Wa ghulamihi hulla. And then I saw his slave also wearing something very similar. Like, look, the owner and ghulam, the slave, they're both wearing similar cloth, cloak. So Abadar and his ghulam were wearing the similar sort of cloth, standard, quality, brand. Wa ghulamihi hulla. فَسَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ ذَلِكَ So Amarur, he was quite shocked and he was saying, oh, he was curious. How come you both are wearing the same? I mean, in our society, you, see, you can see the clear difference between someone who is owner, Malik, or someone who is... Uh, yeah. that's, that's, um, this reminds me of a story that I've come across. It, it's, a, it's a genuine incident that I've come across that um, a particular owner, um, in, our, in our country of origin, a particular owner was leaving for a... Uh, for an okay for a party somewhere, mm -hmm. and when he dressed and came out asking his chauffeur to take out the car, he realized that the chauffeur actually wore exactly the same shirt as he was wearing it to a party. Okay. Immediately before getting into the car, he returned home to his wardrobe, changed the shirt, and then mm -hmm. get back onto the car. Subhanallah. Now Allah. I'm talking of a person who is highly qualified, educated, yet that sort of understanding that I'm going to a occasion or going somewhere where my clothes or the color of the cloth not even the quality or the material of the wardrobe that's been worn it's the color that happens to be exactly the similar to the chauffeur See, the, he then had to change it this so then at that point i realized how low have we gone in terms of our understanding yep and the value of human beings that's true now um so um abadar al ghifar he was wearing a similar cloak as his um uh, slave غلام فسألته عن ذلك ثم غرور question him فقال إني سببت رجلا then he said I abused a man أبو ذر الغفار is saying I abused a man فعيرته بأمه by calling his mother with a bad name so I abused a man by calling him with his mother and gave uh, his mother a bad name. فَقَالَ لِلنَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So when Prophet Sallallahu heard this incident, he said, يَا أَبَا ذَرْ أُو أَبَا ذَرْ أَعَيَّرْتَهُ بِأُمِّهِ Have you abused that man by calling a bad name to his mother? أَعَيَّرْتَهُ بِأُمِّهِ Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّكَ مْرُؤٌ فِيكَ جَاهِلِيَّةِ You are a man, you are a man, you still have the jahiliyyah. You are a man, you still have the the, the ignorance, ignorance the arrogance, yeah. so you see Abadar al Ghifari was was a companion a, a past companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when he when he abused somebody with the with by calling a bad name Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam condemned very clear strongly and denounced and he said you have still have the jahiliyyah now imagine how many how much jahiliyyah do we have nowadays how much do we do in practical we claim to be very good Muslims but how much Islam do we have in our conducts, in our behavior, in our character, in our dealing with other people? Uh, and then Prophet Sallallahu said, Ikhwanukum khawalukum. So Prophet Sallallahu said that, um, uh, Ikhwanukum khawalukum, your slaves are your brothers. Those who are under you, those who are working for you, they're your brothers. So obviously those days there, there was there was concept of slavery, which has been obviously taken. Uh, it, is not, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so he said that your slaves, your sl servants, your workers are your brothers. Allah the Almighty, He placed them under your commandments, under your authority, with the will, by the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ فَلْيُطْعِمْهُ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ. So if someone is working under you or under someone who is who has the authority, then he said he should feed from what he eats. فَلْيَأْكُلْ فَلْيُطْعِمْهُ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ So whatever he eats, he should feed the, 
the servant or the or the worker same similar. But we see a complete opposite to the scenario that you have just mentioned because <laughs> in a country for which the owner, the place where they sit, hmm. the plate where they have the food from is completely different to the person yeah, yeah, yeah. who work for yes. them, or under them, or yes. are known to be um, uh, workers of the houses. Yes. They have a completely different setting. Not only that, we have all we do also realize even in restaurants when they take their um, people who work for them, either the maid or whatever name you call them by they give them a separate area to sit subhanallah so th this is a practical yes. thing that we actually even see even though the slavery has gone mm -hmm. but is not this a form of so slavery so how do then? we how do we expect to advance how do we expect to go forward and i mean i mean in general and the, and then you did mention and then we are the same people when we are treated in a similar way when we come across or when we go across to the gulf countries yes. and then we label yeah. they're all bad they yes. treat us like we're miskins yes. and miskins and so and so forth yes i mean we do similar things in our, with 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 the people with, with you know with our own work people for us, and us, then when yeah. we go somewhere else we expect a better behavior correct so now whatever there is something very important that we need to realize that whatever we expect for ourselves, we must exp expect or we must do for our brothers. Did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, And then there's a hadith of Prophet Very strong hadith. None there. of you can be a true believer until you love for your brother or sister what you love for yourself. So now, uh, So he must feed from the similar the food that he eats uh, and he should clothe him from the clothes that he uh, clothes himself or he or the, the clothes that he wears and don't give them responsibility beyond their capacity don't give them the responsibilities which they can't bear they can't do Sometimes we even see like, you know, people use their animals, the cows and, and horses I've seen in the Arab world, people are using their camels and burden, overburdening them. And this is haram, zulm. So Prophet ﷺ said, Do not give them the responsibility that they can't bear. And if you had to give them some responsibilities, then help them, assist them. Be there for them. Just don't leave them with their responsibility. Look at the concept of equality. How Prophet is trying to deal with these problems, the problems of, uh, you know, inequality. Um, we also see the equality between Muslims and non-Muslims. Now, many of us we think, oh, non-Muslims um, are they equal to Muslims? Um, of course, there are differences of obviously in terms of faith and other the, the aqidah and so on and so forth. But uh, as a human, there is no difference. Yeah. But also, there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the in Sunan Abu Dawood rahimahullah, where it says, "Ala man zalama muahidan." Said the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the, "Be aware if anyone wrongs a contracting man, meaning a non-Muslim residing in a Muslim society or in a Muslim country, be aware, like you know, he's warning." Prophet I'm saying that be aware if anyone becomes bad or treats ill or uh, in a, uh, treats unfairly um, a non-Muslim who is residing in a Muslim society or diminishes his rights, takes his right or violates his <coughs> right or force him to work beyond his capacity or takes from him anything without his consent, without his permission, then Prophet Sallallahu said, I will be, I'll raise a case in the court of Allah on the Day of Judgment. So Prophet Sallallahu said that I shall, I shall plead for him on the Day of Judgment. I will raise a case against that unfair person, even though he may be Muslim and he's uh, being unfair with the non-Muslims. I will plead uh, 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 you know for him on the day of judgment so see how Prophet Sallallahu he is you know talking about the rights of the non-Muslims in a Muslim society so it's a beautiful way that we can demonstrate living here in the West to promote mm -hmm. the actual teaching of Islam that whether you are from a faith or no faith or another faith we still as a human being we're equal and we treat everyone equally 
regardless of what faith they're as from, human beings, yes. as human beings. Yes, yes. Mm. And the last thing, I'm very conscious about our time. Mm. Um, I would like to touch upon one of the fundamental issues that we see day in, day out on our mainstream media's broadsheets and newspaper, that is the, the difference between the genders, mm. men and women, yep, whether it right. be the pay gap, yep. whether it be mm. the promotion at workplaces, mm. b working in a higher status mm. as our position at prof in the professional world. Now, as Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created men and women mm. equal. Yes. Now, what, what, where did we get it wrong? Where are we wrong? So, Especially when uh, the critics of yes. Islam blame is Muslims yes, of Islam yes. that we do not uh, give the status, uh, uh, the rightful status to the woman or we somehow oppress uh, the woman in Islam. Yeah. So there's a big, huge misconception. First of all, let's look at the status of men and women in Islam and what it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. So Allah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ In Surah An-Nahal in verse 97, Allah says that مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا Whoever does the righteous deeds, عَمَلَ صَالِحْ Whoever does the good things, whether he's a male or female, ذَكَرْ أَوْ أُنْثَىٰ فَلَ we will grant them a good life. We'll give them good life if they are, um, uh, if they are righteous servants, whether males or females. So we see the men and women, males and females, are equal in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in terms of the status, in terms of the recipients of rewards, receiving the rewards from Allah. There's not a difference. It doesn't say that the men, women will get less or the or, or the there is no inferiority less. or superiority between the genders. Exactly, but the confusion comes in terms of the distribution of the responsibilities, the roles and responsibilities. This is where many people they get, they get confused. Now, every society and culture, and maybe probably doctrine or the religion, have a way of distributing the, the roles and responsibilities. Now, Islam uh, also gives some sort of roles and responsibilities to men and women. So, many people, based on those Roles and responsibilities, they try to say, oh, the women are not given the chance or even are not, are not, are, women are not given the opportunities or uh, the less privileged and so on and so forth. But when we look at, when we analyze all those things, roles and responsibilities, you'll find Islam is very fair and is dealt with this, the roles and responsibilities very fairly. I mean, this needs a whole long discussion itself. It's, it requires another whole hour yeah, of the exactly. program to discuss more, it, inshallah. This is a complete new uh, topic. The, inshallah, we will discuss it in one of our new episode in the future, inshallah. inshallah. With this, um, I have to conclude it here because obviously we are short of time. And thank you very much for enlightening us and sharing your valuable knowledge. My dear viewers, with this we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. We have been discussing about equality and one of the fundamental aspects that the Sheikh has touched that man and woman are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no superiority or inferiority between the genders. It is us, it's our understanding that has failed us in the wider society. We have to understand it's the piety, it's the taqwa that Sheikh have touched upon, it's the righteousness, the good deeds that differentiate one from the another. And the other thing the guest has touched upon very rightly that we shouldn't generalize any ethnicity or any nationality based on some of the act that has been committed by their forefathers and we cannot label the whole nation as if they are the whole nation that bear the corruption or the label of what has happened in the past. We have to understand whatever wrong happens that's for that particular person it cannot be carried on to the future generation. With this we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. If you wish to share your feedback, if you have any thoughts feel free to email us at our Towards the Origin at chsuk.tv. Thank you very much for being with us watching the program. We hope that you have found the program educational, informative and interactive. Wherever you're watching us across the globe, do stay well, look after yourself and each other. Until we meet next Friday. Subhanakallahumma wa hamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much.